Hi, I'm Susie, and I am here to talk about what's going on right now in our country um, regarding the um, supercharged political atmosphere and how it affects our personal relationships. It's really sad that um, politics affects our personal relationships at all. I don't think it should, but it obviously does. Especially this election, um, people have some very, very strong opinions, and um, it can be very difficult for many people to try to stay um, good with the people that they care about the most when they have different political opinions. So I want to talk about a little bit, um, I've always been considered a, a independent, registered independent, nonpartisan in New Jersey when I was 18 and always registered that way in um, four states that I've lived in. Um, this time I, um, please don't tune out because of this because I'm trying to talk to everybody, really, honestly, I'm trying to talk to everybody. So, um, but lately I admit that I am leaning to the left and it's because of the candidates, not because of the party. Um, I do believe the Republican party is not the party it used to be. Uh, they, you know, they've taken on that, um, it's the Trump party now. It's no longer Republicans. It's the MAGA Trump party. And, um, you know, when I was back uh, in the 60s, because I'm 72 years old, and when I first um, became aware of any political issues was uh, in the 60s. And back in that day, I was a little bit of an activist, and I was like a revolutionary. You know, I wanted to maybe overthrow the government because I didn't like the war in Vietnam, only because the young men were dying and coming home without legs and things like that. And um, that affected me personally because people I knew were going over there and people I knew were coming back injured. Um, and also the whole civil rights thing affected me very much personally because I had a lot of black friends that I always em empathized with. So I was a bit of an activist back in that day that was Martin Luther King's time. It was Robert Kennedy's time. I mean, John Kennedy, uh, I was 11 years old when he was assassinated. And then Bobby Kennedy was assassinated and Martin Luther King was assassinated. And I was very much aware of all that, you know, very early in my life. Um, and now, so for that reason, I can understand the ones that are revolutionaries today that want to overturn the government because that's how I felt when I was 18, maybe. But um, since then, I've come a long way. I was never really much into politics until 9-11 happened. When 9-11 happened, that's when I really started paying attention to everything that was going on in current events and politics and everything. And ever since then, I've been, it's one of my hobbies, keeping up with politics and current events. So, um, I do feel that I am pretty well informed. I am absolutely certain that I am better informed than almost everybody I know because I am retired and I have time to, to view things and research things um, that other people, you know, are more busy or they don't care as much or they just let other people do their thinking. You know, they don't care about forming their own opinions. They just want to listen to somebody that sounds like they might have a good idea. And, yeah, I'm going to flow with that, you know, because uh, they like something about the way they presented it or whatever. Just some little thing resonated with them. So they're like, yeah, that's my guy or that's my girl, whatever. Um, anyway, one thing I want to say straight up, I am not in love with any candidate, never have been. I don't fall in love with political candidates, you know. It's just like the best one. And I don't vote for party. That's why I was, I'm was i considered an independent. Um, I vote for the person. Um, you know, I look at their character, their personality, and um, what I judge as their potential. Um, 
So I'm not in love with Kamala. Um, I'm, I don't hate Trump. You know, I don't, I don't hate him. I don't wish that he would be shot or anything like that. I do believe that Kamala is a much better choice for our country. Um, I like her much better as a person. I like her personality. I believe she has a better, much better moral character. And um, as a Christian, I feel like she's more on that page. Um, there's so many issues, you know, and, and you know, if you're going to pull up abortion, Trump has already flip-flopped on that. You know, he, he just goes with who he thinks he's going, who's going to please the most voters, what is going to please the most voters. He found out that most people are pro-choice more than against abortion. Um, you know, I mean, nobody loves abortion. People, everybody hates the idea of killing, you know, an innocent child, life, fetus, whatever, you know, everybody hates that idea. If abortion ever comes into anybody's mind, you know, um, usually it's for desperate reasons. And uh, if it is for convenience, that's sick. And that's, you know, that should, that's all, but God will deal with that. Government doesn't have to deal with that. What's your motives? You know, I, I believe women should have their choice, and there's many, many reasons that they might choose abortion. Um, but that's not the issue. That's not what I'm talking about now, and that's not even an issue anymore. You know, it's gone to the states. Trump is out of it. You know, Kamala wants um, pro-choice, and it's not even an issue. The issues are immigration and economy. Everybody knows um, economy is harder now. I mean, you know, it's... Definitely inflation is all, you know, has, has risen a lot and um, some things are, are out of control, like insurance and, you know, um, homeowner potential is um, sad right now because uh, homes have gone up so much and the interest rates and the insurance and everything, you know, so that's a sad state we're in. But all in all, if anybody actually looks and compares the numbers, they will see that our economy is way better than it was with Trump. Um, our um, everything, you know, I mean, jobs, G GDP, uh, interest um, uh, is starting to go down. Stock market is way higher. Um, every aspect of it is really better now. Um, we had a bad dip after COVID because COVID hurt our economy immensely. And it's not Biden's fault. And to blame Kamala for anything is ludicrous because the vice president has very little power. The vice president is there uh, to support the president and to do what the president wants that person to do, not to make laws or, or you know, the vice president has no executive power. Um, and people don't realize that they don't even understand the way our government runs, you know, um, they, you know, a lot of people out there don't even understand the difference between federal and state government, let alone county and city. Uh, they think that the president is in charge of every single thing, every city ordinance and every single, every single little thing, which is again, ludicrous. One person doesn't control anything. One, the president has a big influence over mostly their party and hopefully, you know, the people that elected him at least. Um, but and and in the world, the president has a large influence. But I wasn't going to talk about all that. I wanted to talk about our personal relationships. It's so hard and so, so sad when um Politics, which in, in a way is so far from our personal day-to-day -day lives, especially for retired people, um, it, we're not going to be that much affected. Only thing that will affect us, if it's Medicare, Social Security, housing, insurance, those things really affect us personally as senior citizens. Um, and 
for us to lose friends at this stage of life because of that is so sad. Um, in my family, I have my two sons um, think differently than me, and we have agreed to um, not discuss it because we previously used to discuss it years ago, and, and it would always end up with us you know, butting heads and arguing, it would turn into an argument and not nice. So we said, let's just not talk about it anymore. We agreed to disagree. And um, where I live here in this senior community, I think that everybody's been doing pretty well with holding their thoughts um, to their self or in their own little group, whatever. Um, people don't go around wearing MAGA hats and um, whatever, we were not allowed here. It's a city ordinance that um, we don't put up signs or banners or flags for your candidate up until 30 days before the election. And now that time is here and people are just starting to put those things out. I wouldn't do it because I feel like it's inviting controversy and maybe trouble. Um, so I don't do that. Um, a lot of people don't. Maybe most people don't. But um, the time is coming. We're in the countdown. And uh, tempers and tensions will be getting stronger. Um, I have somebody that was I felt very um, close to that I care very, very much about. Uh, and we recently, um, well, we, we agreed to not talk about it, but he couldn't contain himself and had to bring up something. And then... He wouldn't even listen to my point of view, my response to what he said. I listened to him. I heard him out. I, was, I wanted to, to um, tell him some things that he wasn't considering, but he wouldn't let me get past four words. And um, we haven't talked since. Very sad because I really care very much for him. And um, we were doing good you know, staying away from the subject, um, but he just couldn't do it. And it's, you know, it, it's just really, really breaks my heart when, um, you know, I feel like he, he likes Trump more than he likes me, who he knows very well and personally. And Trump does not care about that man personally at all, even though I know Trump sends out these crazy emails like, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you, and all this stuff, you know, I've seen all those emails, um, you know, but that's just a bunch of bullshit, you know, he's just trying to get money from everybody, and he's not even paying his bills if you if he would actually research things, like he owes money all over the place, and I don't know, I don't understand how people, you know, think that all of the crimes that he's been found guilty for and all of the hundreds, hundreds of people that were by his side in the beginning have left him and come out publicly against him, Republicans, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. But if you only watch one or two news stations that are all pro-Trump, you're never even going to know any of the other side and how can people not even want to hear it? You know, I hear both sides. I look at both sides. Um, it, it, I just don't get that. It's just so, so sad. I mean, I think we need to pay more attention and more care to the people that you really love and care for, you know, because they're the ones that are there for you personally, you know. They're the ones that are going to help you when you're in trouble. Donald Trump is not going to come to your doorstep to help you, but your friends will if they're real friends, you know, and family. And those are the ones you should not be alienating. So that's all I'm going to say for now. And um, I'd love to see your comments. And I'll probably be trying to post a little more between now and the election. So I hope you subscribe, follow me, uh, like me, and um, tell me more about how you feel about all this stuff and maybe some personal stories. I'd love to hear them. Thanks for watching. And you can see my whole life story, how I came to this point in my life. If you want to go on my channel and look at my playlist, I got them all in a nice order now. And um, check me out and 
Thanks for watching. God bless.